Thanks, Anthony. And let me just say, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, may they be with us all today as we gather on today, the first Sunday of September, which is therefore Communion Sunday, when we share in both word and in Holy Communion. Uh, this is also a three-day weekend, so thank you for coming out. I know a lot of people are traveling. There's a lot of stuff on the calendars, um, and yet you made time for church, so thank you for that. And our church, according to Carol, this, um, this got her all excited. I think this is, where's Carol? Where did she go? Where, there, oh, over there. Uh, I'm assuming this is the uh, Franklin, this is the, uh, the recorder. And this was an insert about different things you can do, I guess, as college kids come into town. And so for Deerfield, um, they've got a picture. It actually says our newly painted steeple. So for, old, or for Deerfield, they've got our steeple front and center looking into Deerfield. And they've got different activities you can do, like go to historic Deerfield, go to Yankee Candle, and come here to church on Sunday. <laughs> um, so I'm just kidding about the last one, but we did make the picture. And then also, when you turn the page and get to the Sunderland section of the Greenfield Recorder, um, for the Sunderland picture, there's our church again. So um, that painted steeple up there, it made uh, both Deerfield and Sunderland for the Greenfield Recorder. So I thought that was kind of nice, and, and uh, Carol said we will post that over here. So if you'd like to take a look, that'll be posted there. So underneath that beautiful steeple is this beautiful church and more important than the building is that we gather as the people of God in the presence of Christ uh, to share in each other's company and also the closeness of God and as we do gather as this worshiping congregation may we now uh, stand if you are able for our opening hymn and candle lighting from blue hymnal number 492 spirit of the living God and we will sing that verse two times
now turn to our bulletins for the call to worship. Come and let us listen for all that Jesus seeks to teach us. May our worship help us to focus on discerning God's holy word. To listen is not enough. Our faith in Jesus challenges us to not only be hearers of the word, but rather doers of the word. Who will dwell in God's holy presence? Those who walk uprightly, speak the truth, and live the gospel as best they are able. Now coming together as this congregation here in person, those via Zoom and later those via FCAT, our unison prayer. Our souls are filled with a longing for God and the establishment of God's reign on earth. Meet us, hear us, Jesus, and tell us of heavenly mysteries and earthly possibilities. Help us to abide in your hope, one where all people may share in the bounty of creation. Strengthen us with that hope to work at building a better world. Convince us of the truth of your still speaking word to draw us away from the pride of our own assumptions and practices. May this time together at worship and at sharing in the blessings of the Lord's table help us to discern how we may help build up the house of God first in our souls and then in our community. Let us make a difference in the world as Jesus did and as Jesus continues to do through us and our church. Amen. is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, 
and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Uh, would you like to come forward and spend some time down here in the front with the kids? It's up to you. So, Corey, you're going to come, right? Would you want to come down the front? No? I don't blame her. I, I would be terrified, too. I don't blame her. She can listen from right there. So, we are going to... Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, we'll move that over here. So... Jesus is going to tell us a story a little bit later in church about the things that um, come out of a person are the things that we have to pay attention to, not the things uh, that we put into a person, okay? So I got two cups here, and you can see one kind of yucky and dirty. See at home, yucky and dirty. See the dirt on the mug? And this one here looks kind of clean, right? And so Jesus says, when you're looking at a person, you don't want to judge by the outside. You want to give a person to show what's on the inside. Because he says sometimes the stuff on the outside, because up here where you would kind of put your lips and drink, it's clean. And inside the cup, well, there's some stuff in there now, but that's supposed to be kind of clean, right? This nice clean cup, look at that, how disgusting that is, huh? Well, don't, no, don't, it's not, it's not that, it's only dirt, it's only dirt. So there, there's my inside of my cup. Yeah, it's only a little bit of dirt, but you wouldn't want to drink out of that, right? But this one, that kind of clean. So I hope this, this made an impression because my wife is kind of ticked off at me that I did this to her cups. Um, but but Jesus, Jesus is saying, don't look at a person and look at the color of their skin or, or the fanciness or the, you know, the not fanciness of their clothes. What you want to do is you want to let a person kind of show you who they are by what they say, by what they do, and, and then you can maybe, you know, say, I want that person to be a friend or not, okay? So we don't want to judge by the outside, because that could be yucky on the inside. We want to judge by what's on the inside of a person, okay? Make a butterfly. <gasps> that, huh? I don't think I can. All right, what do you, how, like this? Oh, I can make a butterfly. All right, well, thank you for showing me how to make a butterfly. All right, you have a wonderful Sunday school. Thanks. All right. Okay, bye bye. Okay. See you later. Thank you. Say thanks, everybody. Okay. And our special music today is Old French Song and German Song. Wow, by Tchaikovsky. Surprise ending. 
All right, let us now offer our prayers for one another. And we continue to offer prayers for Ukraine and the battles and the wars that are going on there, both in Ukraine and in Russia, and also those affected by the war between Israel and Hamas and also Hezbollah. We continue to pray for our nations. We face the reality of persistent and institutional racism. And a prayer is offered by one of our Bible study group members for a young boy, Cameron, uh, who is undergoing treatments for cancer. Um, so does anybody have any joy, celebrations, concerns you'd like to share before we go to our green sheet? Yes, Jen. Um, prayers for our friend Kathy um, and the extended family. They are going through a very difficult time. Um, they're going through a lot of decisions that are made that would be good for them. All right, prayers for Kathy and decisions to be made. All right. Any other joys, celebrations, concerns? Anything from home? Nothing over there? Okay. Let us turn to our green sheets then and offer our prayers for Alan, Alice, Amy, and Tom, Angie, Angie, Antonia, and family, Art, Bill, Bonnie, Chris, and family, Cheryl, Cindy, Doreen, Edna, Fred, Grayson, Jeff, Jim, John, John, Kathy, Leslie, Liz, Lynn, Marcia, Mary Jane and Joe, Michelle, Mike, Richard, Rick, Sandra, Sandra and John, Steve, Stephen, Virginia and Richard, Wink, the family of Frank Marshan, the family of Pauline Todd, victims of violence and natural disasters anywhere in the world, and we pray for peace on earth. And may we now turn inward for just a few moments in the midst of our public worship to offer God those equally important prayers as the ones we have said out loud, but we just choose not to say them, but we know that God hears them nonetheless. So just a few moments of silence. God of all truth, whose reality is far beyond the knowledge that we possess and even the religious traditions we practice, we seek to honor you by what we hold dear in our hearts and souls, what we speak most sincerely, and what we do in imitation of the lived example of Jesus of Nazareth. We invite your transforming presence within and among us so that we might better offer healing to our world. And all of this begins when we are able to trust deeply in you. So help our faith by letting us know that our prayers, that they are heard and that they do matter because each and every one of us matters. These things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. And may we now share in the prayer that Jesus gave to all of us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> not forget that the bounty we enjoy is a gift from God to be managed with the glory of God in mind. Every single generous act of giving is prompted by God's own generosity toward us first. We are invited to return some of what God has showered upon us through the support of this church's worship and this sanctuary in which we now enjoy and through our ministry to those who most need to know that someone cares about them. Therefore, may our contributions be as generous as our faith expects and as our conditions in life allow. If you're able, donations will be accepted now, or if you're joining us via Zoom or FCAT, they can always be mailed here to the church. However you choose to donate, if you are able to, it is appreciated.
accept, O Lord, these offerings now to be placed here in your sanctuary as a symbol of our love for you and for all others. This is the middle of the three-day weekend, Labor Day weekend, and we celebrate all those who work, who labor, and all those who are able to. And also, as we heard when Jim read from James, that's not easy to say, when Jim read from James, we heard that don't be only hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And so we are asked to put all that we celebrate here in our worship and our prayers and put that into action in the world through our lives. And so by what we do here, we are able to hear that message. We are able also hopefully to live that message. So for all of you who support this sanctuary, this worship and our work in the community over there at that giving tree, through the crop walk, whatever we do, may God bless you for your ability to not only hear the word, but to be doers of the word. May God bless you. And may God bless these gifts to God's own purposes, we pray. Amen. And you may be seated. Today's gospel is taken from Mark, first chapter 7, verses 1 through 8, and then 14 through 15, and then 21 through 23. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jewish people, they do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups and pots and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you, you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine. You abandon the commandment of God, and you hold to human tradition." And then Jesus called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside of a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, and folly. All of these evil things, they come from within, and it is these that defile a person. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. I've had reason to call a, a rather large company on a regular basis uh, lately, and it's almost always after church on Sunday because when I go home, my paper's not there. And so I have to call up and say, where's my paper and do all that kind of stuff. And you know when you call a big company, you're not going to get a person. You get those automated answering services. And so as I'm dealing with this automated answering service, which, by the way, is very polite. They're very nice to me. Um, so as I'm talking to the machine, I know I'm talking to a machine, that it's not a person. And, you know, the thing is, is, as the machine asks me my questions and then I respond in turn, what I, this is a big company. I mean, they got a lot of money. They got a lot of intelligent people working for them. After I give my answer, they play back a recording of typing sounds. And I don't know if that means that, you know, I'm supposed to be fooled and think that as I'm talking to the machine, oh, there's really somebody there typing my answer in. Like, I'm supposed to be fooled that there's a real life person at the other end of the line. I mean, it's just so silly that they would even bother to put that typing music in there. I would just rather have them say nothing at all and just give me my answer so that when I actually talk to a person, I'm talking to the right person. But instead, they play this, this typing music. And it's silly. They're not fooling anyone. And James is asking us a similar question. James asks us to ask ourselves, who do we think we're fooling? And so that, you know, it's really a warning in James. James wants us to know that just saying the name of Jesus, just saying the things that we know we're supposed to say as Christians, he says it's not fooling anybody else. It's as convincing as hearing typing music on a machine that you know is just a machine. So you're not fooling others, but James wants us to think, don't let yourself be fooled by it either. Just because you can throw the name of Jesus around and say Jesus all the time and you can say the stories about Jesus and you can say Jesus is against this and Jesus hates that, don't think just because you're saying the name of Jesus 
that you're really living as Jesus would have you live. And so James, his story is, is that he is considered to be the brother of Jesus, and he becomes the first bishop of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is the center of the earliest church. And so the amazing thing about James and the rest of his family is that in the New Testament, they are not followers of Jesus. They really question who Jesus is. And there are stories that we can talk about in Bible class, but that's really in the New Testament. The earliest family of Jesus were not followers of Jesus during his earthly ministry. And so kind of makes sense a little bit. You know, Jesus wasn't going around as a little kid, you know, levitating pews and pushing people out of the way, you know, just by waving his hands. You know, Jesus wasn't doing miracles for show. So these people knew Jesus as the one you know, who is maybe the pain in the, the rear end, you know, little brother or older brother, the Jesus who, you know, is annoying at some points because Jesus is a brother. And so James, when Jesus comes out now, as he's walking around preaching that I'm the Messiah, James has a lot of trouble with that. And James does not follow Jesus. But James becomes a follower and a bishop in Jerusalem. And he writes an epistle that makes it into the New Testament. And I think that's one of the strongest testimonies that Easter is real. When they saw the earthly Jesus walking around, they did not believe. But when Jesus returns, and it says in one of Paul's epistles in 1 Corinthians 15, it says that he appeared to James, all of a sudden, when you come back from the, the grave and you're glowing, all of a sudden James says, oh my God, you really weren't lying, you're the Messiah. And so James comes over to believe in Jesus. So James knows that words are not enough. Because he heard the words of Jesus. He, he grew up with Jesus. He is probably one of the most intimate followers of Jesus in the New Testament. He knew Jesus maybe better than anyone else. And he didn't follow him. And so now all of a sudden, he has this revelation at Easter that Jesus is for real. And so now all of a sudden, he realizes that words are not enough. You can't just say, I believe. You can't just say the name of Jesus. You can't just show up at Easter and say, that's enough. James says, you've got to do something else. You have to give believable evidence that you believe. And if you don't give believable evidence that you believe, James says you're being deceitful to others and to your own self. And so I think that's the central message of James. Don't try to trick yourself because it's as convincing as typing sounds on an automated service when I call up this afternoon saying, where is my newspaper again? And so in James, there's a lot of things that stand out in James. He almost didn't make it into the New Testament when they were forming the canon, but he, he made it in, and then he almost got thrown out when Luther said there's nothing good in there, but he stayed in. And James is in there. He's an amazing story. It's a hot Sunday afternoon. If you're home in the air condition or a fan blowing, go home and read James. It's a short little story. Maybe take you 20 minutes to read it. But James, you know, he only mentions Jesus' name twice. And that's, that's kind of different than all of the other New Testament writings. Because in the other writings, they really talk about who Jesus is. But James doesn't delve into this kind of, you know, theology. He, he, he leaves that to the others. He doesn't talk about the theology of being a Christian. He wants to do deal more with the practical aspects. If you really believe, then how do you live? If you really want to say the name of Jesus, how do you live as a follower of Jesus? And so he has that famous phrase, be doers of the word and not merely hearers of the word. Because if all you are is hearing, it's that typing sound from an answering service. So I, I think you probably all heard um, that uh, Boeing Starliner sent two astronauts up to the International Space Station they got up there, they were supposed to spend eight days, and they were supposed to come back on the Boeing Starliner. But as they went up, I guess there were thruster problems and helium leaks. And so that eight-day trip is now turned into like a, I don't know, five months. Or so they're supposed to come back in February or something like that. And so the engineers here on Earth can't figure out what's going on up there. And Boeing is telling NASA, put the astronauts on the Starliner. Everything is safe. Everything is fixed. They can come back safely. And NASA's saying, no, we're going to wait for another spaceship to get up there in February because words are not enough. You haven't explained what happened with those thrusters. You haven't explained why there are helium leaks. And so you can say the words that we can put two people in that for reentry, but words are not enough. That's what James is telling us. Words are not enough. And so we have to live into our faith. And not just by doing stuff. What he says is you have to be doers of the word. 
And of the word means compassion. The life of Jesus, the teachings of compassion come down to the word, that, that word compassion. And so that's where it ties in with the gospel. You know, the, uh, the authorities are down in Jerusalem. They're starting to hear of this guy up in Galilee who's creating all kinds of disturbances. And so they're, they're wondering what's going on up there. So Jerusalem, the, the temple, the authorities, the establishment, they send representatives up there to see what's going on in Galilee. And they go up and they listen to Jesus. And remember like last Sunday when we were talking about um, Jesus is in the Capernaum synagogue and he says, eat my body, drink my blood, and followers of Jesus, disciples of Jesus say, who can accept this? And they walk away. So there's real important stuff going on, you know, heavy stuff and, and weighty stuff. And, and all that's going on. And these, these, follow, these people from Jerusalem come up to uh, Nazareth and they, the first thing they challenge Jesus on is how come your disciples are eating without washing their hands first? And then it goes into that whole list of you know, bronze kettles and washing this and washing that. And Jesus blows up. He calls them hypocrites. He says, why are you dealing with the minutia instead of dealing with the important things that we're supposed to talk about, which is like compassion? And this is not only about an attack on Jewish people. we got to know that Christians also deal with minutia, about the smallest things. Think about this table right here. This is supposed to be a table of communion that brings us together. We're all saying the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, but because we have different ideas of what this table signifies, we're in different buildings, and we don't accept each other because of this minutia stuff. So we're no different than that. We, just don't, we don't want to blame the Jews and think it was only the Jews. We do the same thing. And so Jesus blows up at them, and he says, you can't worry about the small stuff. There are bigger issues. So when he says, be doers of the word, of the word means compassion. Not just going through the motion of doing the easy things, but you have to be compassionate. And that's why we talk about crop walk. That's why you got continually that green giving tree over there. That's why we do all those different donations and contributions through the year, because we have to live our faith. And we pray, and we hope, that when we feed our faith with word and communion, that we can be better doers of the word, that we can be more compassionate people, and that as doers of the word, more compassionate, maybe it seeps out into the world, and who knows, maybe, just maybe, we can make the world a better place to live. So may the word and may the gift of Holy Communion, may these sustain us so that we can be actual doers of the word and not just fool ourselves by saying the words that everybody knows, but not doing the hard stuff of living it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And our communion hymn today is from Red Hymnal number 288, Let Us Break Bread Together.
do believe you all have an insert in your bulletins for uh, communion. This table is for all people who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. The Gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, Jesus was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene, and that same day sat at the table with two disciples and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. For this table is for all people who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. I forgot, you've got slightly different prayers than Hatfield. My apologies. Um, where, oh, God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God most high. We give you thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for the beauty and the bounty of the earth and for the vision of the day when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. We rejoice that you call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice and love. We come in remembrance and celebration of the gift of Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be the good news. Born of Mary, our sister in faith, Christ lived among us to reveal the light and life of your grace, to suffer on the cross for us, to be raised from death, and then to live in glory. We bless you, gracious God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in the church among us, and with your daughters and sons of faith in all times, all places, we praise you with joy by saying, We remember that on the night of his betrayal and desertion, that Jesus took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. May we now share in the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood, that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. And let us now stand, if you are able, for our closing hymn, which is Shalom to You Now, that is printed in your bulletins.
thank you again for coming out on this first Sunday of September, uh, which is also in the middle of our Labor Day weekend. I know there's a lot of stuff going on, and yet you made time, time for church, so thank you for that. I hope that puts a smile on God's face. Uh, please remember that next Sunday, not um, 11 o'clock, but 9.30 is our worship time. And then again at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, um, I hope you'll join us for that anti-Semitism program, uh, the first part of a two-part. Uh, the other one is the 26th. 27th, do you remember, at the library? 26th? Uh, the 26th of September, and that'll be taking place at the Sunderland Library. Um, so I do hope that you'll be able to join us for worship at 9.30 and also for the afternoon at 3 o'clock for the anti-Semitism. Let us offer our benediction prayer at this time as we begin to go our separate ways. God offers each of us a deep, inner sense of trust and peace. We can become whole when fed by word and communion because we are the people of God. We are made in the image and likeness of God. We walk with Jesus beside us and with the Spirit to guide us. So may we be transformed by the word of truth so that we would become a kind of first fruits of God's creatures. May this sacred hour inspire us to be doers of the word rather than just hearers. And therefore, let us go forth to love and serve the Lord in all we do among all whom we may meet. Amen.